T'es pas là pour commencer? Do, do you guys know what that means yet? It means let's get started. All right? We're going to do some uh, shrimp creole, but to do that, we're going to make a shrimp stock, okay? So we're going to start with the shrimp stock. Uh, how are the uh, snacks? Y'all enjoy the snacks? Awesome. Good. Had some special ones for y'all. We uh, got some uh, tuna in two weeks ago, and we couldn't sell it, so we decided to do some tuna tartare. So if you have a stomach ache tomorrow, it's not our fault, but you know I'm joking. All right, this thing is messed up, so I need my lighter. Here it is. All right, so for the, uh, I want to do Creole, and we may eventually do etouffee, because these are, you know, really simple, traditional, classical French slash Louisiana recipes that will teach you the fundamental basics of cooking a, uh, you know, a soup, a bisque, uh, you know, and also you can stem from that etouffee and creole recipe and go so many different ways. And I try to do things too that you guys can do at your house, accomplish and be like, hey, I made it, you know what I mean? It's really, really good. So, and eventually, you know, maybe after a year or two, we'll go into some heavy duty stuff. So, but uh, shrimp creole, one of my favorite things, it's really good on different things, but also the shrimp stock will be good for you guys to learn how to make a traditional French glass or stock. So you have uh, different stocks, obviously. You have white stocks and brown stocks. You know, the white stocks mostly can, can, uh, are made of shrimp shells, uh, chicken. Uh, you can even do a white veal stock. Um, the shrimp and chicken take a lot less longer to cook than the veal stock or, or beef bone stock. Um, you know, when we do our demi-gloss in house, it takes us two days to make. We have to boil it over or simmer it overnight. This should be a probably a two-hour, four-hour thing, depending on the size of it. And you want to cut your vegetables in conjunction with that. Okay, so when you do a veal stock that's going to go overnight, we're just going to quarter whole onions. Well, for the shrimp stock, you know, they're a little bit smaller, just kind of large dice, rough chop, and I put all the most of the ingredients together. So we have um, some fresh thyme, some uh, yellow onion, celery, carrots. What, what are the onion, celery, and carrots called? Does anybody know? No. Mirepoix. <laughs> the, uh, the Holy Trinity, Cynthia, <laughs> we take out the carrots and we add bell peppers, okay? And we're going to actually deal with that in a little bit. But, so we're going to take that mirepoix, some bay leaves, peppercorns, all on that recipe, I just kind of put them together because they're all going in the same time. A little bit of olive oil, just so it doesn't stick. And what we want to do is sweat all this stuff together. I'm going to put the vegetables in first. What I did with the celery, you know, just in the restaurant business, you find ways to, you know, pinch your pennies. But, you know, we don't use this for our trinity and stuff like that. But the stalks and the bases, I'll just use that. So the, the shrimp creole calls for a couple uh, ribs of celery for the trinity. So just get a whole thing of celery, chop up the stems and the, the leaves and just put them in there. One large carrot, some peppercorn, some garlic, bay leaves, that fresh thyme. We just kind of want to break it up just a little bit. All right, we're going to sweat that. To do that, we need to put a lid on it. Think of sauna, you know. Same thing applies here. We just want to sweat these vegetables. And what we're doing is we're extracting. We're extracting. We, basically, you know, if you scare somebody, they, uh, you know, well, we're doing the opposite. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're inviting their flavors to come out. And that's the same reason why we're going to start with some cold water. We want to sweat those flavors out of there. We're going to put cold water in there and then slowly extract them. Because when you cook a steak or shrimp or scallops, you get a hot pan and you sear the flavor inside it. Well, we're doing the opposite. We want to get sweat it out and then put cold water to slowly excrete, uh, take the flavors out of that, the shells, the mirepoix, and everything else. So chicken stock, you know, we roast some whole chickens for uh, jambalaya, gumbo, whatever, whatever. We take the meat off, use the bones, and do the same thing. You can add a little bit of tomato paste to make like a richer broth, more darker foundation. Um, you can add fish in here, fish heads, fish whatever. Um, a lot of different things you can put in here. 
This is a traditional, simple shrimp stock. I would usually add a little bit of white wine to this right at the end, just to kind of give it a little bit more umph. For this recipe, I don't want to. I want to keep it simple. We don't want to add anything that might show up in the Creole later. Um, so we're going to sweat this for a couple minutes, get all the goodness out of it, stir it every once in a while. So notice how I'm using fresh thyme for the stock and I'm using dry basil for the Creole. The uh, fresh thyme in the stock, you know, we have a lot of time for it just to kind of develop and envelop its flavor into the stock. It'll be a little bit more bright and a little bit more pungent in a good way to the stock. Well, the same thing with the opposite thing with the dry. You know, there's different times to use dry. There's better times to use dry and there's better times to use fresh. If you're making a gumbo or something that's pretty hearty and strong, it's going to be there for a couple days, you want dry because it's stronger. It'll, it'll eventually come out more and more each day. With fresh, uh, fresh herbs, they don't last as long in terms of their flavor and their aromatics. They'll kind of go away. They'll dissipate a little bit. So uh, the Creole, we want more of a hearty, you know, hearty slap in the mouth, so we're going to use a dry dryer for that and then the stock you know when you use the stock for this we want it to envelop pretty pretty quickly we want it to be kind of bright so we'll use the fresh for that I don't know if that made any sense it did in my head but I'm not sure about you guys all right so we got some goodness out of this we're gonna add the two quarts of water we want to bring it to a boil the shells in there. All right, so we sweat the vegetables. We put the shells in there when we put the water in there, the cold water in there, so they'll slowly pull out what we want out of them. You say you smell it, Louise? Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll bring that to a boil, and we'll simmer it, you know, hour and a half, two hours. Um, we're not worried about cloudiness of the stock here. I mean, this is for home use. You know, you, you don't want it to boil. You know, if you, if you want to do it quick, you can, you know, boil it for a while and, you know, make it 30 minutes, but we want to do it the classical French traditional way, right? So it comes to a boil, bring it down to a simmer. A couple hours, we set it aside. We strain the shells, the mirepoix out of it. You can toss that out, keep the, keep the stock. You can make the stock a day ahead. You can make it that day, either way, it doesn't matter. The Creole, on the other hand, just like anything, you know, a, a pot dish, you know, a one pot dish, the next day it's always better. You know, it, it's sitting and just kind of becoming what you want it to be. So we'll start on the shrimp Creole. Anybody have any, any questions about the shrimp stock? Everybody good with that? Okay. Let's pretend like it came to a boil. Yeah, Dave, much of the flavor of the shells come out into the stock? Oh yeah, for sure. You know what, and I forgot the salt. I'm glad you said that because we need to enhance it. You know, there, there is some, obviously some iodine in shells. You know, there is some salt content in there, but you know, what we're doing right now is flavoring our Creole with this, okay? So we have to think about, we, we want to add a good bit of salt in there. But yeah, definitely. I mean, this will be nice brown tinted uh, and Smell tastes like shrimp for sure. The more shells you put in there, the better. Um, but yeah, there'll definitely be a lot of flavor in there. What makes it brown tinted? Just the, the shells. I mean, eventually, you know, I guess with anything is soaked in water, that's kind of has, I mean, all these ingredients will be kind of bleed into the water, so it'll just kind of tend it, tend it brown. Yes, sir. Nothing like that, you know, basically just like a colander or you, you basically want to, you know, there's some black peppercorns in there and stuff like that. You basically want to get all that stuff in there so it doesn't go into the Creole and, you know, break some ice too with a black peppercorn or something like that. It's, it's not like, um, you know, demi-gloss or something like that. When you reduce it down after cooking it overnight, you put it through a chinois or a cheesecloth to get all the 
and we don't even do that, you know what I mean? Um, in fact, there's not many people that do that anymore. The, uh, the old nouveau way of classical French cooking is kind of dying a little bit. Um, but yeah, just like a colander or a china cap or, you know, whatever. Pasta, strainer would be fine. All right, we're gonna start with a quarter pound of butter. Butter always makes it better. We have our Trinity, AP flour, all-purpose flour. Trinity, Holy Trinity. You know when you go to church, name Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Yeah. Well, in South Louisiana, we call it Holy Trinity, but it's just onions, celery, and bell pepper. It's a classic, you know, it's kind of like mirepoix for classical French. Well, in South Louisiana, it's just changed a little bit, and it's uh, bell peppers instead of carrots. Okay. But gumbo, jambalaya, anything basically made in South Louisiana has the Holy Trinity. All right, so we're going to melt the butter. We have some canned diced tomatoes. Diced tomatoes are so much better than fresh, unfortunately, unless you want to pay a lot of money and get some organic and you can roast them in the oven and take the skins off. And, but, you know, when you go to Walmart or Publix and you get the tomatoes, you take a bite, there's really no flavor to it. So, diced tomatoes, I guess they use the, the flavorful ones for the canned diced tomato ones, but this is what we use for our bouillabaisse. This is what we use for our creoles and everything because it's just so flavorful. And you have to buy a nice one, though. I wouldn't buy, like, the great value brand at Walmart, but, um, but definitely canned diced tomatoes. Um, minced garlic, dry basil, some paprika, some cayenne, a little sugar to neutralize the acids in the tomatoes, and some sriracha, which is uh, one of my favorite ingredients in the kitchen for sure. All right, we have some salt and creole too, just to adjust the seasons later. So, sriracha is a chili paste, a chili sauce. Yeah. In fact, the sriracha plant in California. I forgot where in California, but it's being sued by the city because once, I think it's one month out of the year or one month out every six, mo uh, six months, they have to roast their peppers to make their sauces. Well, people are getting sick and their eyes are burning and all this stuff in the city of wherever it is in California that the city is suing this place, which is every chef's nightmare because, you know, that's a pretty, pretty important staple in uh, our kitchens for sure. It's just a really, really good one. It's not, it's not, too, it's got so many more flavors than just capsaicin, which is the hotness of a pepper. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. So we have the Trinity sauteing. Salted or unsalted butter? That's a good point because I wanted to mention that. It's unsalted butter. And basically, we use, un we don't have salted butter in the restaurant. We use unsalted butter for everything. Um, you know, it's, for one thing, it has a, salted butter has a lower smoke point. You know, when you're trying to saute something in the butter, it'll burn quicker than unsalted butter because of the salt. And also, it's a guessing game. You don't want to oversalt your dish. You know, you want to season and adjust your flavors later. Because if you put salt and stuff in it now, it'll kind of dissipate anyway. So you want to always season your stuff at the end. With the salted butter, it'll be tricky. You know, you might oversalt things. So always unsalted butter. All right, so we want to caramelize our trinity with some minced garlic. Caramelized means basically we're bringing the natural sugars out of the ingredients in this pan. Well, no, just cooking, you know, everything has natural sugars in it. So sauteing onions, you know, they get sweeter when you saute them. Well, that's caramelizing. And, the, and basically it's a scientific thing. It's just the natural sugars are coming out of it. So we have the garlic in there, the trinity. And that whole translucent, you know, cook till translucent bull crap, caramelize this stuff. Make it brown and nice and yummy. This is the most important part of this dish. And I always say that, but it is. This, this first part of this is the foundation of what you need, your finished product, what you're going to get at the end. So this is the magic. We really want to cook it down. It doesn't hurt to put your dry basil in now. It'll basically bloom it, get the flavors out of it. My papa, my grandfather, was a really, really good cook. He was in the oil business, but he also had a restaurant. And I used to work in his kitchen when I was a kid. And this part of it was the, my favorite part, just the smell of it. The, you know, he would just, in fact, he'd have a big tub of caramelized Trinity, you know, just cooked down Trinity and butter. And he'd put it in different things and use it for different things, you know. And it's a vivid memory for me when I was growing up. All right, same thing with the basil, or the, the bay leaves. It won't hurt to put that in there and let it bloom a little bit. All 
All right, so uh, I'm sure everybody knows that New Orleans is more Creole and the Lafayette region is more Cajun, right? You don't go to New Orleans to find Cajun food. It's really not there unless you want to get some tourist trap and it's eh. So Creole is more of a, a city, Spanish. You will, all right, let me, let me backtrack. South Louisiana, you know, you have the, the Acadians that came from France to Nova Scotia, then down to South Louisiana in the 1600s, 1700s. Mostly just French, and they lived off the land, the swamps and everything. Well, New Orleans is more, and that was more Lafayette, Acadiana, Acadiana. Well, New Orleans is more of a melting pot. You know, you had Africans, you had Spanish, French, Italians, Irish, a lot of different things. So a Creole is like an etouffee, but it envelops so many more cultures in terms of you know, Italians and the Spanish and Africans. Uh, the, t the tomatoes are obviously what separates a Creole and an etouffee from each other. You know, anybody that has etouffee and has tomatoes in it, then don't eat it because it's not etouffee. All right, so we got a nice caramelization going. We're gonna put a little bit of paprika in there. Does a couple different things, gives it some color. Also, it's a smoked paprika, it gives it a little bit of flavor. We want to cook it down. We always want to cook it down a little bit because it's blooming those flavors. Y'all see that? All right, we're going to put just enough flour in there to soak up the fat. This is definitely a less, less velvety base than etouffee is. It's a little bit more watery, layman terms, than, than an etouffee is. So we just want to be careful with the flour. We don't want it to be too much of a, uh, too, too velvety, too thick, so. All right, so what is this called? I got the flour and the fat. What am I making? There you go. Yes, you are. You're also coming back. That's good. All right. We don't have to go too crazy. Just cook a little bit. That's going to thicken it up. You go with the diced tomatoes. some shrimp stock we made earlier. Always like to go a little bit at a time. Cooking, cooking can be a, um, a pain in the arse sometimes and a recipe you made you know, a month ago may come out different today. And has a lot to do with humidity and just different things. So we always wanna put a little bit of stock, at a time, stock in at a time um, so we don't put too much. So basically this is this, right? Yeah. Uh, usually, you know, traditionally, you know, everybody, well, every book will tell you you always put cold stock or cold water in a roux. Um, it doesn't make that much of a difference. So, it, you know, you can make it right away and make it, it'll be fine. All right, so this will come to a boil. Let it simmer for a while. We'll adjust our seasonings. I think on the recipe, I put, uh, you know, serve with rice because that's obviously traditional, but there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different things you can do with this. Um, I remember a recipe growing up, uh, you know, redfish is big in Louisiana. We go redfish and we take the whole redfish, you know, half it basically and uh, fillet it and you'd put the redfish in a pan some raw shrimp on top, pour the cold creole on top and just pop it in the oven and just, you know, it's like a, almost like a redfish sauce piquant with the creole sauce. So you can put the shrimp in there, you can put some crawfish in there, a lot of different things. You can put, you know, grilled chicken in here, you know, pulled chicken, um, some smoked corn, you can do, a, you can make a soup out of this. There's a lot of different, different directions you can go. Uh, you can sear your favorite fish with shrimp creole, put the fish over rice, a little bit of shrimp creole on top. All right, so it's starting to thicken a little bit. So basically what you want to do when I said add the stock a little at a time, 
You want it to come up, it'll start to thicken. You look at it, if it's too thick, you know, you add a little bit more stock. And you're asking me what's too thick, uh-huh. All right, cayenne. I think I put a teaspoon in there. Uh, this the teaspoon will make it, you know, a nice little kick. So if you don't like as much, obviously then don't put as much. So we're getting a little bit of velviness. You can see that flour is thickening it up. I'm gonna add a touch more. This was obviously the uh, more than required on the recipe. How can you keep that shrimp stock? Uh, shrimp stock, you know, I would look at it basically like a, you know, a, a perishable seafood item, you know, probably three or four days. And then after that, it won't make you sick, but it won't taste as good. You know what I mean? Can you freeze it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right, so that's looking pretty good to me. Two pounds, these are 26.30s, so roughly about 27 shrimp in a pound. Um, obviously, that's a, a good bit of shrimp for each person, you know, almost half a pound. Um, see, we're coming to boil now. You can use smaller shrimp. These are 26.30s. I used the shells for the stock, and then I peeled and deveined them. I didn't butterfly them. I just took the poo-poo out of them, basically, which is a shame. It's such good flavor. Joking. Just joking. I take them out of my shrimp, but not my crawfish. All right, so we're going to put that shrimp in there. What y'all think about that? That's pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we do not want to overcook the shrimp. Um, when I'm boiling shrimp, you know, shell on, I'll put all the ingredients in the water, you know, the cayenne, a lot of salt, uh, some lemon, some celery, a little bit of onion, bay leaves, black peppercorns, all that good stuff, and uh, bring it to a boil. Let it, sit, let it boil for a good 10 to 15 minutes to let it develop its flavor. And then I'll put, you don't want to overcrowd the pot, but you put a good bit of shrimp in there and you just turn it off and just let it steep in there. You don't want it to boil and boil and boil. Um, all it takes is just throw it in there and turn it off for the boiled shrimp. This you got to let it cook a little bit longer, but don't overcook it. You know, this is cooked, right? Yeah. We got to make sure they're all cooked though. All right. Man, that looks pretty good, yeah. Give it a pop, Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm a big Creole guy. I, I, I like Creole. I mean, I, I like Italian food, so this is kind of as close you can get to mixing uh, Italian and Louisiana. All right. Well, for me, I mean, you know, that's you know, this is something. This is my recipe that you know I, I've created just being here. You know, tomato basil is just hand in hand. You know what I mean? So I do want to taste it. Like I said, we always have to adjust our seasons. Did Our Creole seasoning. I didn't, you're right. See that? I thought I was missing something. What did I say? Like one or two or three or four squirts, something like that? <laughs> yeah, I forgot, but I'm sure it's good. All right, so that's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and make a plate for y'all to check out and then to taste. What's that? Take the, do you have to cook the shrimp to take the shells off? No, we, we peel, you know, peel 25, 30 pounds of shrimp a day. Uh, raw, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I say we start with some the shrimp creole. So you see the texture on the plate? Not too thick, but it's also not too watery. It's got a little substance to it.
guys, we just made this. This just just happened, right? That's pretty beautiful, right? All right, some shrimp creole. A little rice. For me, with items like this, if I don't have some crunch for some green onion, then I'm just not satisfied. So we'll take off the ends. Do a little bias cut. But also, like I said, gotta have a little crunch, right? All right, guys, this is our shrimp creole. Appreciate it, guys. Thank y'all so much. I had a lot of fun. And as always, guys, at Gabe's Downtown, Fat Equals Flavor. Thank y'all.